So our law traditionally distinguished between married parents and unmarried parents. If a child was born to an unmarried woman, that child was deemed, quote, illegitimate um, in the eyes of the law and didn't have a legal entitlement to support from um, parents. Um, over time, the mother was given uh, custodial responsibility for the child, but the um, child didn't have the ability to sue and support for a father-child relationship until, in many places, the second half of the 20th century. I imagine for most of the, the viewers, that'll come as a bit of a surprise. The, the concept of parental support or child support from the father in an unmarried uh, in an unmarried re relationship is relatively new. Yes, not only is it relatively new, so it wasn't until um, the late 1960s and early 1970s that the U.S. Supreme Court said states can't discriminate against children based on the marital status of their parents and that unmarried fathers had to be treated like unmarried mothers and married mothers and fathers. Um, but through much of the 20th century, there was a statute of limitations in many states in terms of how long you could even have to bring a suit for support from an unmarried father. Um, and states had one, two, five-year statutes of limitations. Those were eventually struck down. But I mean, we're talking the 1980s. So it's a fairly recent phenomenon that we think that unmarried fathers are necessarily legal fathers and that they owe obligations of support to non-marital children. In the latter part of the 20th century, uh, Congress got very involved with parentage um, because it wanted to collect more child support. It wanted states to collect more child support because rates of non-marital child rearing were going up and ordinarily you would see more mothers with custody of those children. Um, they might apply for government benefits and the states and the federal government were trying to get more essentially unmarried fathers to pay the support that would otherwise be coming from government benefits. And so Congress passed a legislation multiple times, but one important piece of legislation required that states have what they called a hospital-based system of paternity establishment. And that's what gave us the acknowledgement of paternity. And um, it's available for an unmarried man to sign. He signs it with the birth mother, and that is them saying that he is the biological father and that he is taking on rights and responsibilities. When he signs it, he's waiving his right to genetic testing. So oh, the reality is some men are signing this knowing that they're not the biological father. 